Hi everyone and welcome. That's the first class for the course Embedded Linux. Today we're going to talk about toolchain. I'm going to explain what a toolchain is and how to install one. A toolchain is a set of packages needed to create software for a specific device. Toolchains can be either downloaded and installed or they can be built using a toolchain generator. A toolchain is the very first thing that is needed when building an embedded Linux machine, as it will be used to generate the bootloader, the kernel and the root file system. Toolchains are usually based on either GNU project and the compiler system GCC or low-level virtual machine project and the compiler CLang. Now, bear in mind that CLang only compiles C-like languages while relies on other technologies for ADA, Fortran, Java, etc. Also, GCC is a more robust but memory intensive system. The standard GNU toolchain includes compilers able to compile C, C, Java, and more, producing assembler code that is then passed to AS, the GNU assembler. Being utils, to turn assembly code into binary by using AS and link objects to create executable files by using LD and much more. C library implementing POSIX APA able to talk to the kernel and request kernel services and much more and debugger. Toolchains can be either native, when development and target systems are similar, or cross, when development and target systems are different. Almost all embedded Linux development is done on cross toolchains. While the native methodology requires software updates to be strictly controlled, as development and target systems have to be synchronized, cross-development requires large amount of work as all libraries have to be cross-compiled. Toolchains have to be built according to the target machine specification. So you're going to have a look at the CPU, the big little engine encoding. Bear in mind that some CPU are able to switch and change and work with both, basically. And then, how are you going to manage the floating point? Do you have an hardware floating point device? Or you're going to be loading a library? And then the ABA. That's a just a very small list GNU project used the following standard to identify its toolchains. If you are in front of your Linux machine and you try this line of code over here, you might get a similar output. Right? Now, this is the CPU. Then the vendor is missing. Then you have the kernel, which is almost always Linux. And then C library. And sometimes you also find the ABI system. But in this case, it's missing. C libraries are wrapper functions for system calls, from which they are often named. Programs use them to talk to the kernel. That means that system calls and C libraries 
do pretty much the same things, although these ones are much easier to use than this one. glibc, best implementation of POSIX APA, although a large one. eglibc, forked from glibc for embed systems, obsolete and no longer maintained. muscle-libc, good choice for system with low RAM and no storage. uselibc ng, forked from clibc, designed for embed systems and mobile devices, running MicroC Linux. Choosing a toolchain. The options are usually three. A pre-built one, one created from scratch before installation, one created using an embedded build tool. At this stage, we're going to be talking about the very first two options because for the third one, we're going to need a fully working embedded Linux machine, which we don't have yet. We're going to learn how to install it and how to manage it, but we don't have one yet, right? So, a pre-built one. Easy option, even though less flexible. You might want to choose one of the following. Make sure your chosen tool chain comes with your preferred C library and also it's easy to update. Building from scratch. This is not an easy task even though several very good projects already exist, like for example the cross Linux from scratch, which you can find over here. A simplified approach consists of using cross tool ng, which comes with lots of useful scripts driven by a front end. At this stage, this project can be found over here. To install cross tool ng, you need to clone the repository and then you need to check for dependency. So we are in the cross tool ng directory and then cd testing, cd docker and then here we need to list all the available directories and we need to choose the one that matches our distribution or the closest one, right? Now, in here, we are going to find the docker file. We open the docker file with the text editor and we are going to check the dependency. Now, you might not be running apt-get, but you're definitely going to get a list of packages. Some of them might be already installed, but some of them you might need to install it. You need to make sure they are all installed. And then, when then it's done, we cover this one. Okay, we need to move up. Okay, we move up. So we are in the cross tool ng now. Now we need to grab the version that we want to install, right? Okay, I can just press tab and then it's going to show me the available version and I did install this one. You can choose whatever you like but I would recommend you install the same so we end up with the same software. And then when you do this, right, when you do cross tool and G, right, and then eventually enter and then you're gonna go bootstrap and then configure enable local and then make make install 
and then CTNG, which is going to open the menu. Uh, the whole process shouldn't take too long, but um, it depends on your internet connection as well. And now we are ready to build the toolchain. First of all, we want to make sure that all directories are clean. And that's why we run the disclaim command. Now we get a list of sample configurations that are known to build and work. And to do that, we run this command over here, which might take a while. That's the list. Uh, you can pick up wherever you like, uh, even though for the course we chose this ARM architecture that you can see. So if you pick up the same string that I chose, you can end up with the, exactly the same configuration that I got. Right? Now, you want to open the configuration menu. And then, by using the arrows, enter, and space, you can change, you can navigate, right? And what you need to do is removing the read-only flag from the render the toolchain read-only and then you can start building. This is going to take from half an hour to up to a couple of hours. It depends on the speed of your internet connection and the speed of your computer as well. If you have built the same product that was chosen for the course, then the tool chain will be located here. Here, tools such as compiler, debugger, linker, all rename with the tool chain identity are located. So the standard LD is going to be renamed like this, right? Let's have a look at what I've got here. So, okay. Right? So that's my GCC, that's my, uh, let's see what I've got, LD, GDB, right? All renamed. Okay. And finally, Try building something using the compiler, then run the standard Linux program file, which should produce an output similar to the following. Right? Okay, so I would say that will be all for today, and I hope you've enjoyed my class and. Uh,